to be really honest, uh, you never have done any uh, political song, but with the power you got now, you could expose a few things, not to turn yourself into the Redskins or the Red Wedge. Mm. But uh, have you ever think about it? Doing political songs? Yeah, like you know, <coughs> the Bradford gig. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Um, well, uh, they are, well, they either something ha to me, right? I mean, lyrically, if something happens that you feel strongly enough about, then you will. I don't necessarily think that writing a song is the best thing to do with it. Sometimes, to be honest, I don't. I don't know whether that writing a song about an important issue might trivialise the issue. Do you know what I mean? You're mixing rock and roll, which is essentially good times, whatever, drink. Parties, fun, concerts, Ooh. with well, I mean that's what it is. Don't kid yourself, please. No, no, don't no, kid no. yourself. And uh, it's like the other side of it. To me, I don't think that I like to be in a band that would be accused of trivialising trivialising something that could be really, really important to somebody else. Just like I'm in a band. Oh, that's really bad. So I'll write a song about it. Make loads of money. Uh, what do you, you know? What do you do? You give all your money away. And then loads of people want you to do it for them. You spend all your time doing charity. Like Bob Geldof can't even feed himself, he's that poor. Bob Geldof spent so much time doing Band-Aid that he's broke. His band's career is finished. So, you know, what's that Band-Aid done for Bob Geldof? You know, he didn't even get a fucking honour yeah, from the government, you know? He's like, oh. But on the other hand, you're going to be accused of uh, suspicious silence. Suspicious silence? Well, I don't think your people can really accuse... I mean, you can't get in too much trouble if you don't say anything. Oh, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, well, it depends. It depends on if the person who makes the accusation wants to. You can, you can make. Of course, you can make accusations, but we've done charity things. We never get asked, to be honest. You know, like people have asked me my opinion on Live Aid and would I have done it? I mean, yeah, of course I'd have done it. I don't think anybody would turn down Live Aid. You know what I mean? It was just that we never got asked because we're too small. You know what I mean? Live Aid was based on the biggest selling record artists in Britain mm. to get the most people. It's really clear cut. They wanted the most people in Wembley Stadium to make the most money to give to Ethiopia. So we didn't really figure in it, you know. We did our Bradford Fire thing on the quiet, you know, very quietly. Just did the concert, sent the money. No big deal. We don't. I don't. Yeah, that's, that's the best thing to do. We never get approached. If we get offered them. Um, then we'll consider them all. The only one we, ne we never did was the anti-heroin concert in London because two reasons. The first reason was we didn't have a drummer. And it's difficult to do concerts without a drummer, believe me. Yeah, I know. And secondly, if we'd have had a drummer, I didn't like the fact that the only reason they wanted us on there really was to pull up an audience because they didn't have a headline act. They had Spirit of Destiny, Hawkwind, all bands that are not really big enough to be on the top and they wanted us just for that. They didn't want us to actually do anything creatively involved with stopping people taking heroin. They wanted the cult as a name to go on the top of a poster and perform to bring people in. And I didn't think that they approached us on the right level. They approached us like, do you want to do a gig? It's a benefit, brackets, for heroin, you know, and that was it, you know. And I didn't think that if you're going to get, you should get involved if you're not going to do something more than just a concert, you know. I was there, I went to, I went to both, events, paid my money and did my bit personally, you know. So, I've done my, my conscience is reasonably clear. Okay, let's you know, stop talking about politics, that becomes pretty boring. It bores me to death, I hate it, that's why I joined the group. Yeah. I can't stand politics, and, uh, it bores me. To speak about uh, the next EP, could it be a cover EP, uh. with Wild Thing, H.O. and stuff like this? It could be. But I don't. I don't think it will Give be. Give me a pleasure. Uh, it wouldn't. I don't think it. I don't think it would be that. I don't know. Um, we don't really do that many cover versions, actually. Wild Things the only one we really do. Eight shows of it. You know. I mean, if you actually heard that when you were sober, yeah. it's like, ooh. No, it's, it's good. So the ones that don't really fit with the band are stepping stone, and I can't explain. Yeah, you can't sing them really well. No, but I mean, we're not that very. I'm not that good at that side of it. You know what I mean? Sisterhood are much better, they do loads of cover versions. They can do them really easy, we can. And um, in all the, the reviews about the cult with mm. Ian, you always get the same name, Hendrix, Janice Joplin, but never talking about the doors or the seats. Yeah, well, then... Uh, you, never, you never made a statement about your personal influences. 
well, I, well it's, it's really dull. I mean, it's nothing what I listen to. I mean, it's just like probably the music that everybody else listens to. I mean, what, what I've got in my bag for my Walkman. You're listening to the cult? Uh, I listen to I do listen to the cult, actually. I've got our album in my bag. I like it sometimes. You have to listen to bits, remember what you did back then in May. But um, I listen to all sorts of stuff. So I bought Psychedelic Furs albums recently. I really like them. And I uh, bought Roxy Music. I just like basically rock music. I'm a rock fan. Do you know what I mean? Like I've, I've basically come to understand now, at 24 years of age, that I think I just like rock music with guitars. You know, and that's my style of music. Most other things kind of bore me a bit. And no blues, no country? Mm, you know, maybe. Sure. What, well, no, I'm not really a great blues fan. Muddy Waters a little bit. Yeah, he's one. Um, I wouldn't say he's got many blues albums in his collection. Yeah, he seems to like it. Well, we can do it. Blues we can do. We got we, As a band, we, we do quite a lot of, like, make up on the spot blues songs, because anybody, any musician who's worth anything can play the blues. You know what I mean? It's more a question of whether you've got any talent to do it. The blues is just fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Talking of cover versions, listen to this. This is a. He spot this one. Sisterhood soundcheck with a Neil Young song. Right, great. <laughs> You'd be surprised, I think. You know, like what I was saying about revolution and, and like change, the song Revolution about a change that I see. Yeah. I think there's a lot of change in people's musical tastes, really. Yeah, I think so. It's in the last year and a half, since punk rock finally, finally finished. I mean, really finished in a big way. Now they're writing articles about the history of punk rock, which makes me feel very old. They, um, people's, people's ideas have changed. I think people are looking back at a lot. You know, I am, in, in records. I mean, I, I've rediscovering music from before I was even old enough to realise what it was. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, if there's nothing new in front of you, you naturally, the human instinct is to look back and just check things out from the past. You know, they're in the cheap racks. The Doors have sold more albums in England since, like, they split up or he died than um, whatever they did b before. Do you know that? That's like in the last four or five years. And that isn't a new thing, you know, the thing, the, the tag, psychedelic hippie rock music, which we're supposed to be the leaders of some movement. A, there isn't a movement, again. I deny any knowledge in any movement. It's just, I mean, Echo and the Bunny Men have been, like, doing, like, Doors cover versions since like 1979. It's no big deal. The Banshees have done Beatles songs from you know throughout their career. I don't feel all we did a little bit. I must admit we orchestrated, like we led the press and the media to think something was happening, so they give it more exposure, and then suddenly realise that the only band around who they could write about was us. So therefore, suddenly we're in national papers and stuff like that, you know. I mean, that, that was just us using the best means we could, given the music we'd written, to promote ourselves, you know. That's all. And uh, you were saying that you listen to some cult songs. And uh, yeah. do you, can you still listen to Dreamtime? Now you got time to, to see how was it. Oh. What do you think about it? I think that was just a... a the dream time to me was just a real shame because it could have sounded so much better. The songs, the sound of the record, the actual, it's just not powerful enough for me, I don't like it. It's too fast, the songs are just that bit too fast, it makes it annoying to my ear going, oh why didn't we play it slower? It's quite funny because I think about the second LP that's too slow. Nah, well yeah, everybody get, well I can't run about like I used to anymore, so you play all these slow songs so I can... You know, do this to him as opposed to going like that, that, you know. But no, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's too slow. I think it's a choice of material, but I mean, I just like dance beats. Don't, I don't mean disco rhythms, right, 120 beats a minute, you know, like heartbeat. I just mean making sure the rhythm that you're putting to some music, people can dance to in whatever way. You know, and like, I've heard like for the Phoenix, like in like, a lot of psychedelic clubs, it's like people freak out to it, you know, it's like, whoa. And um, Love gets played a lot in clubs because it's got a real sort of um, dance beat. And uh, people don't like to dance when it's going, or oh, whatever. You've got to find the right, unless it's high energy music, and that's essentially 4-4, four, four, you know, rock tempo, but it's speeded up. It's hard to explain, I mean, I just like 
I like things that you can boogie to, like psychedelic furs, things like that go bum 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 bum. Sort of. It's headbangers without the hair. A little bit. I know, I know, actually, I don't mean heavy metal. I got interviewed by two French heavy metal magazines yesterday, and that was okay. funny. Metal Attack. <laughs> and uh, another one. There's another one, I forget the Enfer. name. Um, possibly. Probably. A bunch of kids. Yeah, it was, I just, it was funny, you know, they were going, what do you think of, you know, Venom? And I was like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's the noise. Yeah, it's just like, what, just the wall of noise. It's noise. You, you should listen to all kind of music, I think. Oh, yeah, I mean, you I'm a great... Who do I like? Who likes us? Oh, Metallica, have you heard of them? Yeah, yeah. Good. Their guitarist, big cult fan, he came to two of our shows in America. <laughs> He's really into it. I don't know why he likes us, but I met him at two concerts, and he was just there to, I don't know, strange guy. Weird, you know, he's got all the gear, you know, all this, what they wear, you know, the outfit. Well, yeah, but it's sort of like silver and white with like rhinestones and then I'm going, oh, yeah. And it's me and him chatting away, I've got like black leather on and he's wearing all this fucking like spandex and tights and oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Um, what are for you the, the, the worst aspect of the coat? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say mine. It's so, the photography pictures and the backing vocals on oh. stage. On stage, yeah, and um, the worst aspects of it. Yeah, the backing vocals are dreadful. I can't sing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't sing. But um, you should try to to, to learn. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried practice, but this is what I do for a living, so I don't get much time. You know, every night I do it, and hopefully the idea is it gets better. <laughs> Maybe it's just a running joke, you know. I, I can't sing, and Jamie certainly can't sing. Jamie's terrible. <laughs> I know, Jamie. I mean, I'm hopeless. I've got one range. You know. I hate it. And it's also complicated to sing. I mean, I can't even. I'd like to sing and practice now, but there's no point because with only one guitarist, I'm quite busy. Do you know what I mean? Like, sort of looking up and down the neck and that. So I can't really spend my time. But uh, what was the other aspect you didn't like then? So, photographic pictures. Wait, what, all of them? No, no, a lot. A lot of them? Yeah. What do you mean, like the tone or the. Like the, the zigzag cover, like the, the best uh, photographic pictures. Oh, I thought they were two completely different styles of photo. I thought one this was really like dreamy. And serious. And like photographic art, what to you is an, a, a tasteful picture, might not be to my taste, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we do look serious. People say that to me all the time when I'm playing. It's usually concentration. <laughs> Believe me, honestly. Because it is quite, I mean, I'm not like saying that I feel I'm a really brilliant guitarist. It's just some things I do are a bit um, complicated. I've got a noise in my head and I somehow managed to teach my fingers how to get this noise. Uh, then I have to do it every night and it's sometimes really difficult. So that's why I'm always on stage and like, because I can't, you know, it's my, you know, my, my head is, I can't. You know, you got you got to do deal with what God gives you best. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can not all you can do about it. So I look serious, but I should try and smile more. But yeah. you know. people never see me smile anyway on stage. I smile a lot at Ian. Yeah, once you know. the time you were, you were smiling. That was when I used to drink a lot. No, <laughs> a lot, lot, lot. Like, where am I? What is this? Which way do I po get pointed at? The, you know. And to speak about the century tour. It was mm. uh, not sold out, but not far away from it. But yeah. uh, on the century after the gigs, yeah. you, don't you get the impression that it was a good intention, but it turns to a failure. Everybody seems <sighs> boring during these after gigs. Yeah, after. well, it depends on the city. Some cities were really good. So I was at the wrong city. Wh which ones did you go to? I'll tell you the ones I thought were shit. London was terrible. Yeah, it was a That I just wanted to leave. I nearly Bristol. beat up one of the fans. <laughs> One of the fans was supposed to meet said something, I nearly hit him. That was how bad it was. It was just fucking... Bristol? Mm, I enjoyed that one. That was just a lot of fun. I like I liked the Bristol one. Glasgow was good. Manchester was terrible. Depends on the people. I mean, it isn't our thing, right? The whole idea of those little sanctuary clubs that we did for one tour was only give them the opportunity, if they want to, to go to a disco after a concert. That The music that's being played is the music we like and we never even said we'd be there we just put it on because I felt that because the venues had changed from being clubs we played into big halls um, that the distance between the band and the audience was getting wider so I thought well do these clubs make a bit of an effort and give them somewhere to go because these concerts finish at like 11 o'clock in the evening everybody's kicked onto the street with nowhere to go especially in cities like Leicester 
you know, some of the, the medium English cities, there, there isn't a club that these kids want to go to. There's just like discos. So we did that, and in, in common with most British new ideas, it didn't really catch on. You know, it was like like that. You know, we'd never done it again. We never intended to do it more than once to try it. You know. And can you have a few words about Alice in Wonderland? Um, a few words about. If you, should, if you should do some kind of propaganda in France. What for Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. I don't know. They should be paying me for this. <laughs> um, I think it's really. I mean, it's one of the only clubs in London that plays decent music, and also that we as a band don't get bothered when we go to it. Everybody leaves us alone and just treats us like everybody else. We don't get bothered by people wanting to talk about the group. Do you know what I mean? And that can happen in London once you get a bit famous, you've been on TV a bit, you begin to get bothered by people who, when you're in a nightclub, want to talk to you about your work, if you know what I mean, in inverted commas. Like, I, if I want to go to a nightclub, I want to go for the same reason everybody else does, to listen to music, to get drunk, you know. And um, I don't really see... I, uh, in some clubs in London, the atmosphere is really bad, you know, and people, the music's shit as well. I can't stand most London nightclubs. The music is so unimaginative. The DJs are so shit. Compared to like New York and places, there's, there's only been very few good nightclubs in, in Britain. Batcave was good for a while, until it got taken over by tourists. And you go there and it's like spot the English person because they're all tourists. And Alice in Wonderland, they, they don't let They got a membership system, right? So the people who were members when it first started, like some people, when it was started, get in now because it's only a small club and everybody else doesn't get in. And that's where the Batcave made a big mistake because the people who originally were involved in making the club a success didn't want to go and spend the evening with people coming from Germany and France and Sweden and America standing there going, well, I've got the clothes on, what do I do? <laughs> And that's what happened, you know, and I didn't actually used to stop going. Everybody that I know that went to the back cave stopped. It was then, and that's why it fucked up. So Alice's, they're a bit more sussed about it, you know. And they, I think they're going to take it, like, not out on the road, but they do, like, evenings, Alice in Wonderland evenings. They done one in New York. I think they might start doing that with Doctor and the Medics as well playing. They're good. Have you seen them? Yeah. yeah. How do you like them? I can't stand them. I think they're great. I they're saw, such a good laugh. I them at Bristol. Uh, I can't understand if he was... A real joke or a real crap? It's a bit of both, I think. That's yeah, the beauty of it, you know what I mean? Problem. They're not a they are not a serious group, see. Unlike us, they do not take themselves seriously at so. Yeah, good fun. Um, All we did was three concerts in America and two in Canada. And mostly they were an excuse to do loads of interviews, because like in America the the media is so much more worked out. Every you know, you, everybody's got so much more technology available that everybody wants a piece of the action so you can do a lot by just doing one concert which you know in one major city and everybody comes to it and you do a lot of press because there was no point in us going round America because nobody had heard of us you know they still haven't in a lot of places so we thought well we'll do one in New York where we know we're popular do one in LA one in San Francisco and two in, um, in Canada like Toronto and Montreal and so Sky Saxon on stage what's that? Sky Saxon who's he? The uh, leader of uh, love. See, see, I don't know about this. This kind, you know, I'm not. I'm not a great psychedelic yeah. fan. No, I don't no, no, know. No, no, you I'm know. not talking about this. I say, have you uh, read the um, paper called Liberation in France? Well, yes. well, I don't read. My French isn't too yeah, good, no. as you know, so I'm not likely to read your national article news. Of, uh, an article about the cult and yeah. just a Marie chain, and yeah. you're saying uh, about. Uh, He and, and Billy that they were opposing uh, that night, uh, and then in front of the stage was Sky Saxon was completely delirious. What me? Yeah, no, no, not you, delirious. The Sky Saxon on stage. Oh, no. So it was just a lie. I, I think it might have been a little bit of a lie there. <laughs> really, it that sounds like a good story. <laughs> so what? So there was a concert. There was a they, concert. They said there was a concert. You were you were one week at, in LA. Yeah. And. Uh, The journalist was saying you were posing in every places, and you went one night. Uh, it was yeah. not Halloween; it was maybe a New Year's Day. Doesn't matter. Yeah. There was Sky Saxon on stage, reading some poets and saying some strange stuff. 
French journalist has a lot of imagination, so... And that's the thing, well, I mean, considering America is about fucking 5,000 miles away or whatever, LA's, God knows, 8,000 miles, miles yeah. from here, so they must have pretty good eyesight, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, whoa! Those type of people, but, yeah, it? fuck. What a crap. What a lot of shit. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I never seen Sky Saxon. I wouldn't know what Sky Saxon looked like. I didn't even know what band he was in. You know what I mean? I only just heard about the seeds. Really, I don't. And um, do you play the snake on stage? No, not anymore. We used to do it a while ago, but we don't do it anymore. It's too difficult. And Bondi? Sometimes. We've got more songs now, so it, it's not... I mean, it's more flexible, live set, encores and stuff. Sometimes. We did it last night in Paris. Uh, you should do it tonight. It always depends. You, you know why? Why? <laughs> it's a private joke, because at the Alice in Wonderland, yeah. Ian uh, sang it yeah. because he was 23. Yeah. Tonight I'm 22. <laughs> Is it your birthday? Yeah, tomorrow morning. Oh, tomorrow morning? Yeah. It's Jamie's birthday today. He says, doing a radio interview, so, talking about the bass player's birthday. <laughs> Let's get really personal. So play mate. one bag. <laughs> well, Do you remember uh, Leon's last year? Yeah, oh yeah. The West Side Club. Yeah. Oh, I remember it. And uh, you know that It's a bit Rob small from what I can remember. A bit of a little place, <laughs> wasn't it? And uh, you know that a lot of people tonight are really expecting something from the cult. Are they? Oh, yeah. fucking hell, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? What are they expecting from the cult? Talking about the cult now. Well, uh, well, I hope they're not expecting like to see something like you know, Christ reborn or um, you know, the Sex Pistols reincarnate or something. You know, I mean, like I'm just no, average kind of guy. Okay. I hope they. I mean, no, I'd, I'd, maybe I'm being a bit flippant. Um, it depends. Do you mean like they expect to see something really, really like they've never ever seen before in their lives, no, no, or I mean, just they're looking forward to the concert? No, There's no, a difference. No, There's no, no, they are not waiting for the next big thing, but for a great gig, because in October 84, when you played, at the end of the year, there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, poll, poll, and the best gig was as usual. Well. well, that was a good one. That was a really good concert, because we did some really bad ones in France. I mean, you know, you know. Yeah, in Montpellier. Do me a favour, you know, I would really wish I was somewhere else, but, you know. Wren's wasn't too good. Wren's? Wren, I'd say Wren. That was uh, not so good either. Did, like, four days ago. That was... Uh, and, uh, have you ever think that tonight a lot of people, I think, are going to have a real surprise with the light show? And uh, you're going to have yeah. new fans who are going to say, oh, yeah, great, they are not this obscure uh, punk band and all the... On the other side, then some people say, oh, uh, nail the hippie and all the crap things that you're really going to Yeah, that's play. about a fair way of summing it all up. I think that's the fairest way to... That probably happen. You know, the best place to get an opinion on a band, we find, is like the toilet at a gig. We always send out... Our managers, when they come to see us play, that to get a, re a, a cross section of reactions, they always go in the toilets and listen to what people are talking about in the toilet about the concert. And you usually get across, and it's usually a bit of both. It's like some people going, "Wow, they're really good," and other people going, "Fucking hell, I preferred them when they did do a Spirit Walker," <laughs> you know, or, or, or Southern Death Cult were really, really good. If everybody who said they'd seen Southern Death Cult had seen Southern Death Cult, they would have been bigger than Led Zeppelin. You know what I mean? They were like. We're talking like... You mentioned Led Zeppelin, I never mentioned it. Oh, I never mentioned Led Zeppelin. <laughs> you, you mentioned Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Not guilty. Because that's uh, the most boring fact in the music press. You always find the same in Led Zeppelin, Nels the EP, and uh, stuff like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. We've had some good ones, in, some interesting comparisons made in America that are really funny, because when I see, like, in a country as big as America and Canada, that I see the press, like, in photocopied little bits from this paper from Chicago, Detroit, you get San Diego, you get these little things or articles, photocopied. So you read through them like this, you know, for half an hour. And you just write down, I, when I was in New York the other week, um, we did, I wrote down every band that each journalist had compared the cult to, and then added up the most popular comparisons, and it goes down in a scale. So first of all, you've got um, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and... The Edge is mentioned a lot. Not you too so much, but The Edge because of the guitaring. And those are the three most common denominators in a cult album review in America at the moment. From that, you go down to, uh, you get The Doors, you get, and it starts getting a bit weird. You get Vanilla Fudge, Cream, Free, um, The Sex Pistols, Generation X a little bit. 
um, Black Sabbath. Guy. I don't know. Oh, I met him. Oh, that's another story. Billy Idol. I met Billy Idol. He was at our show in New York. Um, it was, um, and it goes down, and it, it ends up that there's that many different bands that people hear in our music. That I mean, there's no. I don't think there's any real. I don't think it's too imaginative to say Led Zeppelin when you consider yeah. simple facts like the singer's got long hair and he doesn't play a guitar, he stands there, I stand to his side with a similar shaped guitar Jimmy Page uses, we're all, we're young and uh, he's, he, I don't particularly, you know, and the music's rock, you know, rock in the kind of rock music so I don't think it's very imaginative, I think it's a bit of a, I take Led Zeppelin comparisons a bit, bit of a cheap shot. So. Yeah, I mean, but personally, I think it's brilliant because I like them. But to me, somebody saying that we sound yeah, like Led Zeppelin is. Everybody like, makes mistakes. It, well, yeah, I, you know, it's a free country. Uh, the best comparison that you get, it was, and it's funny, from the uh, melody maker, who said that uh, the journalist said, You remember him, Bar House? Yeah. I think it was not an insult. You shouldn't be happy about it. What, Bar House? Yeah. Ah, well, you, if you remember. Two years ago, the same journalist did exactly the same thing to Bauhaus. Exactly the same front cover, centre pages. They just had Ziggy Stardust as a hit. They were a hit band, sell out concert tour. Exactly the same thing happened two years before. So I think that it's ironic the Bauhaus thing was mentioned because it's the same record company, and I know Bauhaus, people in Bauhaus, I know them. So it was amusing when they. Uh, What they did about it, we just ignored the guy because he's a prat. And I've met him since, Steve, Steve Sutherland. He's just a fucking idiot. He's got hair here. So, I mean, this is the guy who's gone on about hippies. He's got hair to here, but he wears it like kind of greased back. But, I mean, the guy's got longish mm -hmm. hair. And uh, he looks pretty much like everything he says is bad about the way we look. Nearly. You know, I just find it amusing when journalists try and tell people how they should look. I mean, like... You know, are they write for Vogue or something, or they write for a music paper, you know, it's like, please. You know, most Brit journalists are like, they're fucking, you know, they wear training shoes all the time. Nothing against training shoes, but they've got an image, they, a non-image thing journalists have. And that's why they like bands like the Smiths, because they feel kindred to their image. And they don't like flamboyant bands, bands who dress up a bit, you know, whatever way. It's just a bit sad, you know. Okay, I'll finish.